So I went on a Kenyan safari to take pictures of animals with my 400mm and the Z8. And the F6 and some film, I suppose. So the trip started with a flight to Nairobi and waiting for our car at the airport, which was delayed by the security screening and then staying in a hotel with an armed guard and a heavy front gate. And when I say armed, I mean armed with an AK pattern rifle. The next morning at half seven, I was picked up by my tour guide Simon and we started the four hour drive to Lake Nakuru National Park. After a stop overlooking the Rift Valley and getting some very nice coffee, probably because it was grown around the corner. We headed down a really long hill where you could actually smell the worn out truck's brakes burning ahead of us. And also because Kenya is a correct hand driving country and a lot of the surrounding countries uh, using the Kenyan ports are wrong hand driving, the traffic is an experience to say the least from the passenger seat. After a long trip and seeing a camel that was on the road for some reason, we arrived at Lake Nakuru National Park. And once Simon had dealt with the paperwork, we drove past the guard with the AKs into the park for the first game drive. The first animals were pretty standard, pumas, I mean warthogs because of the tusks. And then we saw the first of the big nine, which was zebra. And then about 10 minutes later, we saw the second of the big nine, black rhinos. After the rhinos went away, it turns out seeing black rhinos get this close is quite rare and lucky according to the tour driver. After seeing a gazelle and some lionesses stare each other down, and literally a blue bald monkey. We headed for the lodge. The lodge was actually super nice with my own sort of building slash room. And because Kenya is a former British colony, they use the same plugs as Ireland. I was also told to keep the doors locked using the worst key in the history of the world as baboons can get in and I would presume they'd wreck the gaff. I also, from my room, had a really nice view out over the park. Also, I think there was a better way to do these signs at the lodge. And while I was sorting out my room, it started spilling rain. After the rain, we headed for an evening drive and came across a tower of giraffes just sort of grazing near the road.
And then it started raining again as we got to the bush runway, but we got to see a pride of lions up close. After that we headed back to the lodge and while I was there I actually wanted to stargaze and do some long exposure star trails from the balcony but it was too cloudy and I was really kind of annoyed by that. The next day I was up for 5.30 at a coffee and an early morning drive. So we headed out towards the lake itself to see some flamingos but there were none hanging around. So then we headed back to the runway from yesterday where there was another tower of giraffes and this time a crash of white rhinos just chilling there with a calf. Then we headed around to the other side of the park where there were some buffalo engaged in activities and then we saw a cackle of hyenas fighting over some meat. Buffalo okay. school. 
One visit to a waterfall later and passing some monkeys, we headed back to the lodge for lunch, checked out and headed to the Masai Mara, which is a five hour drive away on rough roads through the hills. I think that I'm going to hide in Somewhere by a gate and start Baby, they ain't never gonna find me I'm a renegade oh. I could be the one who saved you from this I'm playing We could be as one and we'll escape We could run away, we don't gotta stay I can feel it, it burns inside The gate of the Masai Mara while Simon sorted out the paperwork, I was approached by the incredibly annoying people trying to sell you trinkets locally. Once we got into the Masai Mara, we headed straight to the camp, Ekena Kenya, I think that's how it's pronounced, which was just hidden in the bush. Getting there involved just driving across the fields where nobody else seemed to be going and through some bushes, so I was kissing goodbye to my kidneys on the way there. Once I got settled in my tent slash room, I was told that I needed to have a staff escort going to and from my room after dark because the camp is not fenced and there are animals whose day job is murder can just kind of wander in and also because it's next to a river, which is full of hippos. The internet was strangely fast though. So after being told that I would drown in a river full of hippos or be hunted and torn to shreds, we headed out for an evening game drive and came across some elephants and then we finished with a fantastic sunset. I think it burned today. Once again, we were up at 5.30 for that tasty coffee, and it was time for a morning game drive to see the Toki Prize, which had cubs around.
and it had a Nat Geo film crew there. So it was just me and the Nat Geo crew hanging out, filming lines at 6 a.m. in the Masai Mara, as you do. On the way back to the camp for breakfast, there was a pair of saddle-built storks just going to town on some frogs near the camp as well. After a refill, we headed out looking for some cheetahs, but on the way I had Simon actually stop the van to get this lovely shot of a giraffe walking straight towards us. Once we got to the area the cheetah was in, and after a bit of setup and Simon spotting the cheetah with his binoculars way before me because I couldn't even see it with mine, and also he knows what to look for and how to recognize the animals, he got us into a perfect position to get the cheetah walking towards us across the grassland. Also, the cheetah had four cubs, which was awesome. After the cheetah had settled down for a rest in the shade, we went looking for a leopard in the bush, uh, but we did pull over to see some hippos on the way. When we got to see the leopard at first, it was actually kind of sad. It was surrounded by people in vans jostling for position to watch it and take pictures, which was really annoying to see. So after a bit, I actually asked Simon if we should leave because it was bugging me how many people were annoying the animal like that. After a bit more driving we got to see more hippos and I got to film one doing this in glorious AK. We then stopped by some lines in the rain as the light fell and I got some of my favourite photos of the trip with these lines. Did you see that? Yeah, I got it on video. <laughs> Thank you.
Another day, another 5.30 start with the Nat Geo boys filming the Pride. After breakfast, the sky was actually clearing up quite well, so I decided to load up the F6 with my last roll of aerochrome. After breakfast, we headed out, and the first thing we saw was this big bird that I actually can't remember the name of right now. And then we drove through a massive herd of buffaloes. And there was a calf there. The original plan for today was actually to head across the river to another area of the park, but the river was way too high to cross due to all of the rain yesterday. So instead we headed off to a leopard sighting that we heard about on the radio. But we stopped on the way there because we saw some giraffes engaged in activities. Once we found the leopard I was able to grab a few shots, including one with the full spectrum Z6 and the 720 IR filter. Once I had my fill of the leopard asleep in the bush, we headed up to a spot where there was a lioness going to absolute town on a zebra. Not long after this, we spotted some ostriches nearby, which we also went to check out and watch this male ostrich pursuing a female. With the late afternoon settling in, Simon actually spotted on the binoculars a pair of lionesses that looked like they were watching out for stuff and might start hunting. While the lionesses were prowling around and looking for prey, one of them walked right towards us in the van and let me get these straight front-on walking shots of a lioness, which I think looks super cool. Unfortunately, the lions had other ideas and just sort of stopped hunting and sat down in a big pile together. And after watching them for ages, they just didn't do anything. Mm -hmm. 
and with that disappointment and the rain falling we decided to head back to the camp a little early but on the way we spotted a newborn buffalo calf. That night while I was in the tent, one of the staff members came up and asked if I wanted to see the hippos that were going up the river in the last light of the day. I'm actually quite surprised at how well the pixel was able to film this because it was almost black dark. Day five was my last full day and before the morning check-in on the Pride, we went looking for a serval cat near the camp. Once at the Pride, we found out that the lions had made a kill in the night and the cubs were chowing down in the fantastic early morning light. After a few bird sightings and breakfast, we headed to the other side of the park, taking the long way around through the nearby town due to the river being too high to cross again today. On the way there, a bridge was blocked and the river was actually overflowing it and washing the banks away. So that made the trips kind of interesting, as well as stopping at the bank in the town with the armed guards. Once we got back into the park, we found a coalition of two male cheetahs in the shade. Now, apparently there were five cheetahs, but one was killed by a croc in the river, one by the other males when he came back from mating, and the last was killed by a Maasai with a spear. So now there's only two left of this coalition. As we drove away from everybody else along the river, we found a parade of elephants in the bush, to finish my aerochrome too. watching the mongooses tear into the termite mounds for a bit and a few bird sightings we saw another cheetah chilling on a bank and then it started hunting and was going towards a lone gazelle in the riverbed nearby
This was all great until a herd of Tommy gazelles showed up and the cheetah spotted them so it paused the hunt for a bit. And then when they all ran away the cheetah just forgot about hunting and lay down just to tease us. As we set off from this, and after nearly running over a nest that this bird had made in the middle of the road, we went looking for another leopard nearby. Once the leopard calmed down and went to sleep in the bush, we cracked out our lunch with a sandwich made of the crumbliest bread known to man. Now here, once again showed us he knew exactly what the leopard would do and got us into the perfect position well in advance. So all the other vans started driving around and panicking when the leopard started moving in different ways to get the shot, but Simon knew exactly what it would do perfectly and had set us up just right so that when the leopard started moving away, we were in the exact right spot to get some great photos. Also there's a monitor lizard here. After spotting a croc in the river and then a giant kingfisher, we headed back to the camp in the rain after helping tow a stuck van out of the mud. My final morning in the Masai Mara started at usual at 5.30 with a coffee, but this time it gave us a fantastic sunrise as a party gift. And on the way out of the camp, I saw the Africa shot with the silhouettes of the zebras and the umbrella thorn tree with the sunrise in the background to just give some glorious photos that I was looking for. Not long after that, we saw a cackle of lions tearing apart a cow in the morning light. And then, lastly, the final sighting of the trip was a parade of elephants with calves passing us by on the grasslands. Once we were done with the game drive, we headed back to the camp for breakfast. I packed my bags and we set off for the five hour drive back to Nairobi airport 
for the 11 p.m. flight. On the way out of the park, things got interesting because a truck got stuck at the washed out bridge. So we had to go around a different way and use a river crossing. So I actually finally got to do a river crossing, which was kind of cool. While I was leaving the Masai Mara for the final time, I did actually buy a few trinkets from the women at the gate. After a few hours of driving, we stopped to get some food with apparently every safari vehicle in the country. And while I was there, there was a gift shop. So after buying a few most likely fake and definitely overpriced carvings, we set off again. On the way up the long ass hill we'd come down earlier in the trip with the burning truck brakes, Simon actually started getting really worried as there was no traffic coming down the hill, which generally means there's been a crash. And after some creative driving, avoiding the traffic along the cliff edge in pure Africa traffic chaos fashion, we found that a truck had actually gone over the edge and was being winched up. He also told me that people in the town at the bottom of the hill watch for truck crashes with binoculars and when one does crash, hundreds of people run up the hill to loot the cargo out of the truck and then start stripping the truck for parts. He actually sent me some pictures that he had been sent of this happening. But even with the few hours of the delays that were caused by this, we did get back to the airport in time. Now, once we got to the airport, it turns out to drive up to the airport, you have to go through a security check, and I had to walk through a separate security check on the airport road, which meant I had to walk across a few lanes of traffic, which was exciting, and then I had to find Simon on the other side of the checkpoint, and he could bring me the rest of the way to the airport. <laughs> and then at the terminal entrance, I had to do a full security check, where I also got a film hand check, I then checked my bags in and then went through another full security check and headed to the Pride Lounge to burn off a few hours before the flight. And then at the gate, we had another full security check before finally getting on the plane. After a delayed overnight flight to London, I actually had missed my connection to Dublin, so I got bumped to the next flight with a food voucher in hand for a coffee and watched the sunrise from the airport. Once I finally got home, I had an hour's nap and then went out with some friends for pints until I could no longer stay awake. <laughs>